Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use the controller auto provisioning feature of Cisco Prime Infrastructure. This feature is extremely helpful if you're faced with a greenfield deployment where many controllers are involved and need to be set up at once. Here we will take a deep dive into the configuration start to finish. In this tutorial I'll be using Prime Infrastructure 1.2 with a 4400 series wireless LAN controller running 7.0.116 code. The documentation for auto provisioning across WCS, NCS, and Prime Infrastructure does not reference it, but controller auto provisioning requires or assumes the use of the auto install feature on the wireless LAN controller. My network here is comprised of three subnets that are routed together by a 3560 layer 3 switch. My management network, so to speak, of 10.100.1.0WAC24 in VLAN 998 is where my prime infrastructure instance and DHCP server live. The network my wireless LAN controller will live on is in VLAN 10, and the network my wireless LAN controller service interface will live in is on VLAN 11. First, we need to make sure DHCP is set up properly. Auto install requires DHCP with specific options. Auto install begins about 30 seconds after the initial boot of a wireless LAN controller with no current configuration saved. We'll see this later. It will attempt to get DHCP from the service interface or ETH0 as well as the DTL0 gigabit port 1 on a 5500 or 4400 series controller. In this tutorial I'm using the service interface for DHCP and the reason why is simply that in most deployments the ports heading to the wireless LAN controller are trunked. So first I make sure our SVI for VLAN 11 has an IP address as well as an IP helper address pointing to my Microsoft DHCP server at 10.100.1.10. We see that here. Next, we need to set up DHCP for the 10.10.11.0WAC24 subnet in VLAN 11 with a proper default gateway and optionally the DNS server addresses. Additionally, we also need to set up DHCP option 150 for TFTP pointing to the prime infrastructure instance where it will download the configuration file via TFTP. So first, choosing set predefined options, I will add a data type of IP address with an option code of 150 to my DHCP server. Next, I will add a new scope for VLAN 11. The proper subnet. I'm going to exclude the first 20 addresses. Leave the least duration alone. Configure additional options including my default gateway which will be my SVI IP address. A domain name and I'm going to point DNS back to this same DHCP server it also acts as DNS. We're going to activate this scope later. Now, as you can see, our scope's been created. It's still down. I need to add our newly created option 150 and point it to the IP address of my prime infrastructure. Lastly, we need to activate this DHCP scope and we should be finished with DHCP. Next, we need to configure Prime Infrastructure. We'll go to Configure, 
controller auto provisioning we need to create a new filter selecting the drop down add filter click and go now the configuration we put in here will create an XML configuration file that our controller uh, will download as part of the auto install process we'll take a look at that when we're done here so first we need to enable the filter to make it active and give it a name now the filter mode gives us some options as to how we want to specify our controllers we have three options in host name MAC address or serial number as part of the install process the controller will do a reverse DNS lookup if possible to identify its own host name this assumes you've created a DNS record for it, but also assumes that it has a specific IP address that it received. It will also try its serial number and MAC address file names with a dash config extension to download its configuration from the TFTP server. I've chosen to use MAC address as it seems to make the most sense. In most cases, you could get the MAC address or serial number off of the box the wireless LAN controller came in with a scan gun. In this case, I choose MAC address and we notice the field has changed to MAC address. So I'll enter it here. We'll notice three other fields here as well. The config group name allows us to provide a controller configuration group to apply further configuration after reboot. I'll choose default, a configuration group I created that we will look at later. Additionally, we can enter controllers using a CSV file. If we choose this, PI allows us to download a sample configuration file. And then ultimately we choose between non-5500 and 5500 controllers. The difference here is that the 5500 controller does not use the AP manager interface. Because I'm using a 4400, I'll choose non-5500 here. I'll then need to enter my information. I'm going to enable lag put in my IP address on VLAN 10 for the controller management interface along with its default gateway the IP address of my AP manager interface again on VLAN 10 and its same default gateway with the DHCP address of my DHCP server in this case I'll leave the virtual IP address alone lastly I save this configuration It says the filter new site has been created. And now we see at the bottom here our controller exists with a status of not applied. That's it for now. But let's go look at two things. First, the controller config group I mentioned earlier. I've had some trouble getting this to apply properly. PI's templates allow for all versions of code and types of controllers. So applying configs such as higher MCS rates will result in obvious failure providing the controller does not support them. For my config group I have 28 templates applied. To look at that configure controller configuration groups and here is my group. Next I want to show you what we've created. For this we'll head to the console of our PI instance. The default location for this is the local disk TFTP folder. As you can see, a number of files exist in this folder. Most of them are controller config backups for my existing controllers as that job runs nightly. But as you can see, we have a file matching our MAC address ending in dash config. If we take a look at this file, we'll notice it's a relatively long XML file that includes all of our configuration. Okay, 
Now it's time to move to our controller. And here is our controller. It obviously currently isn't out of box, but we're going to clear the configuration with clear config and then reboot it to give it just that. Now we'll watch as the controller reboots. This will give us about 30 seconds and then start the auto install where it should get an IP address on the service interface in VLAN 11, download the config file, reboot, uh, come back up, it gets added to prime infrastructure and applies the config group we discussed. There we see we received 10, 10, 11, 21. We downloaded our config, we're updating the configuration. We see we received 10.101.20 from DHCP option 150. And at this point, the controller will reboot. Now that the controller is booted back up, if we give it a minute, it should be online and should now show up in Prime Infrastructure. If we look at controller auto provisioning, here we see the status is not yet applied for the config group. we look at configure controllers we don't see our controller yet which means we'll have to give it some time there we see the controller has shown up and we see the status has been applied if we click on the device device successfully auto-provisioned. Thank you for viewing this how-to and I hope it was helpful. If you'd like me to do any other Cisco Wireless how-to videos, feel free to message me or comment on this one with what you'd like and I'll do my best to accommodate.